And one of the things that if you do a historical reading on socialism and communism is the concept of conformity, yes. right? That everything is about conforming. Right. Uh, we see these concepts in Scandinavia, Hans Lovin in North Korea. There's a cultural Asia, submission. Writ large. Most of Europe, free speech, you and I would not be allowed on the radio, even in Canada, right? right. So, so around the world where we see socialism, we see this sort of lack of individual freedom. But one of the, the nuts that's hard to crack in the United States is we have these issues of, of the culture wars, right? So we have people who want to tell us that gender is a, a social identity, it's not biological. And I made the point in the monologue that, that if we allow these movements to fester, we will find ourselves leading to socialism. First, we deny truth. We shut down free speech. We shut down debate. And we give more power to the state to enforce these new constructs that have replaced truth. It might sound crazy, but the way things are going with our culture wars, all roads do lead to socialism for the left. Remember the Kavanaugh hearings? Yes. Remember that moment where both Senator Cory Booker and Kamala Harris looked at this so-called witness, Blasey Ford, and said, her truth. What, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, her truth? Truth, if it's a word that makes any sense, refers to one reality. Either Justice Kavanaugh, this godly man, is a serial rapist, or he's not. You can't have different interpretations of that fact. That's the left, that truth is just a perspective or a tool to use against your enemy. Um, when you talk about this collective mindset, I don't insult Star Trek fans. I'm a big you know, sci-fi guy. But you remember the end of the Star Trek movie when Spock is dying inside the radiation-filled engine room and he says, the needs of the many sometimes outweigh the needs of the few. That's their philosophy. The Borg. There's also the Borg. The Borg. The Borg. Well, right? Be the Borg. Absorbed. It's the same thing. The left says individually. Now you're going to make me do this. Wait a second. I think they also get the Star Wars metaphor all wrong. They say Trump is 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 Darth Vader. No, no, no. no. Wait a second. <laughs> right. The rebellion wanted small government. Yes. Darth Vader and this and right. and, and the, the Sith lords wanted this big galactic government. And yet even right. even even the, the biggest. Sci-fi nerds get it wrong. Totally, totally. Look, um, let's let's understand that we are blessed in this country. We take it for granted. I chose this country. I'm a legal immigrant. The First Amendment does not exist anywhere else on the planet Earth. There is no other constitution that says you have freedom of speech as a civil right, as a uh, God-given right. That's why you have what you have in Europe. That's why you have in Canada this thing that Jordan Peterson spoke out or at and said, the government's going to dictate to me what pronouns I have to use. That's fascism. It, that's Stalinism. To people who are new observers or armchair observers, it would sound crazy, right? How could you make the case that... that calling people their, their pr preferred pronoun could lead to socialism. Well, if the government forces you to. Right? Yes. If the government says right. you can no longer stand on the biological truth that we're XX or XY, that people can identify whatever they want, and if you don't recognize it, you are going to be penalized by government. Therein lies a fear that we have of speaking out or speaking differently or disagreeing. It, it, it's a long arc, but it's still an arc. It's crucial to understand that what George Orwell wrote about in 1948, where he transposed the title of the book to 1984, that's not fiction anymore. That is happening in America. The idea that language is being controlled. If you can control language, if you give that power to the state, you can eventually control thought. My parents, as children, suffered under fascism. My father was tortured and arrested by the communists after the fascists. Back then, there were certain things you were not allowed to say by the state. And if you said them publicly, you could lose going out to college, we'd be banned. And if you persisted in saying something that was not politically correct, guess what? You could end up in prison. And what did we see last week? Kamala Harris saying that Donald Trump's Twitter feed should be banned, should be suspended. That's a totalitarian answer to the predicaments we face today. There's also a boldness among people who think that the government should surround them and insulate them. And right. you tell a story in the book. Uh, it's the opening chapter of the book. Right. Uh, I, I know Trinity College because I lived in Hartford. I know exactly the neighborhood. Right. 
You were there to celebrate your daughter's graduation, and you were confronted by right. someone who called you exactly one of those pejoratives, right. having absolutely no knowledge of the pejorative, but yet had gone through <laughs> higher education or, and still came out the other side thinking you're the bad guy. Or knew nothing about me. So this is earlier this year. My daughter's graduated cum, uh, summa cum laude from college, and I want to celebrate her graduation. And it was fine. It was great. Everything was beautiful. And then afterwards, this little slip of a girl, you know, 85 pounds dripping wet, comes up to me in front of hundreds of people, Andrew, and says, are you Sebastian Gorka? Are you the Gorka that worked in the White House for Donald Trump? And I smiled and I stretched out my hand and said, yes, that's me. To which this little girl, raised here in America, said, then F you, you effing Nazi. Now, this is why I wrote The War for America's Soul. How do we get to that place where a young girl in America, the freest nation the world has ever seen, is so brainwashed, so indoctrinated, that she thinks a man whose parents suffered under fascism is a Nazi? That's the danger that we face in this country. You know, it's amazing is that in Europe, and I, Ludwig von Mises wrote very eloquently that the reason why Nazism took shape was they already gave up on the idea of liberty, right? The communists and the socialists, they had the same ideas. There was no such thing as a constitutional libertarian, right? So as we try to import these ideas into the United States, they say anyone who's not on this side is on that side, and that's the fascist Nazi whatever side. And we say, well, no, we, we want constitutional libertarianism. We small want freedom government. of small government, 10th Amendment, states' rights, and all this stuff. But it seems that what socialists in this country have learned is you have to vacuum up the disenfranchised, mm -hmm. right? And you have, to, you have to promise them a new power if they join in. But deep embedded in all of that is the new conformity. That yes, we're gonna, we're gonna rally around the kid with the nose ring and the purple hair, and yes, we're gonna, we're gonna rally around the person who doesn't know what bathroom to use, and we're gonna rally around all of these, these people who feel disenfranchised, but really what they're being, they're being offered is not is is not really what's in the brochure. It's a at the end. It's all about conformity, right. single payer health care. You know, no free speech. The Green New Deal. You'll work where the government says. You'll travel when the government no says. No Second Amendment. No Second Amendment. All of these individual rights will go away. And won't it be funny that it will have come from us from people who thought they were asserting their individual rights? And those who lecture us on their tolerance. Yes. Let's be very clear here. The tolerance of the left is what leads to uh, Portland, Oregon, a gay Vietnamese American journalist being beaten so badly he gets a brain bleed one block from the headquarters of the police in Portland and they do nothing. That's the conform. If you disagree, if you dare to disagree with their nostrums, then you will be attacked, not just on social media, but physically. Antifa, anti-fascists, excuse me, they are the fascists. Yeah, when you're beating people in the With street. a mask on, you're the brown shirts, you're the fascists. Can we just have a reality check?